Hello, welcome back to the Stories Podcast, where we perform weekly stories for your family to enjoy. This week, we bring you Peter and Penny Rabbit, a take on the classic story Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Enjoy! Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Penny, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank, underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into any mischief. I'm going out to run some errands. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five carrot cakes for dessert. Flopsy and Mopsy, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter and Penny, who were very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden. We aren't supposed to be here, said Peter. Don't be a chicken, said Penny, and she squeezed under the gate. I'm not a chicken, I'm a rabbit said Peter, and he followed his sister into the garden. The garden was full of riches like Peter and Penny had never seen. Thick orange carrots were piled high, and delicious red radishes spilled from baskets onto the ground. The two rabbits started to eat, and eat, and eat. Finally, they had eaten so much that their little bunny bellies were swollen and full. Feeling rather sick, they went in search of something a little sweeter for dessert. I'm the most full, said Penny. No way. I ate way more than you did, said Peter. I must have eaten a thousand carrots. Yeah, well, I had a million radishes. They continued to argue as they hopped through the garden, which is why they didn't hear Mr. McGregor until they walked right into the farmer's muddy boots. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up when he saw Peter and Penny. He could see the fat stomachs on the little rabbits and he knew immediately that they had been eating his vegetables. Stop, thieves! he yelled and picked up his rake. It had a long wooden handle and shiny metal tines. I'll get you, little rabbits! Peter and Penny were as scared as they had ever been. They ran this way and that, darting around scarecrows and dodging potatoes, but they couldn't find the way back to the gate. Their full tummies made them heavy and tired, and so very, very slow. They leapt through a bush, and Peter found his fur snagged on some thorns. He struggled and struggled, but he couldn't work himself free. Penny! He cried. Help! I'm stuck! I'm stuck! Penny turned and saw her brother Peter snagged in the thorns. Hold on, Peter! I'm coming for you! Mr. McGregor was nearly there, swinging his rake at the bushes and yelling wildly. You little thieves! You won't get away this time! Penny grabbed Peter by the scruff and started tugging him. Penny, that hurts, cried Peter as the thorns pulled his fur. Just hold on, Penny yelled and gave a last mighty tug. Peter popped free just as Mr. McGregor slammed down the rake into the bush. Peter left behind big tufts of fur, but he was free and he and Penny ran again just ahead of the farmer's rake. The old gardening shed loomed suddenly before them and they saw their chance. There was a hole in the side of the shed's old wooden wall. It was far too slim for a farmer, but just the right size for a rabbit. They both jumped for the hole and shot into the shed, just ahead of the clashing rake. Inside of the shed, it was dark and quiet, but they knew they didn't have long before the farmer went around to the door and came in after them. They jumped into a watering can and huddled down. It was dark and cozy. It would have been the perfect place to hide if it wasn't so very cold and wet. The door to the shed slammed open. Mr. McGregor stood in the doorway. He had dropped his rake and instead held a stout piece of firewood. Here, little rabbits, he said, using the firewood to flip over a dusty old flower pot. No one wants to bake you into a pie, he said. I just want to talk. He thumped the firewood into an old sack of seeds and jabbed it into the compost pile. Oh, no, whispered Penny. What is it? whispered Peter right back. I have to sneak. Snee, 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 ah, achoo! 
Penny, no! yelled Peter. But it was too late. Penny sneezed so hard she tipped the watering can over and both rabbits spilled to the ground with a great wet splash. Now you're mine! yelled Mr. McGregor. He tried to hold the rabbits down with his feet and thump them with the firewood cudgel, but the two lucky little rabbits managed to dodge away just in time. They squeezed back out through the hole in the wall and shot off into some nearby bushes. Mr. McGregor came out and yelled wildly, but seeing no sign of the naughty little rabbits, he picked up his rake and he went back to work. That was close, said Peter. He looked quite a fright, his hair soaking wet and frazzled from the watering can and missing in patches from his encounter with the thorn bush. Too close, agreed Penny, still sniffling and sneezing. Maybe we should have listened to Mother after all. You're going to end up into a pie. I am not a pie. I'm a rabbit, wailed Peter suddenly. I don't want to be a pie. I hate pies, and I'd, I'd make an awful one. Be quiet, Peter, said Penny. No one is going to be a pie. We just need to think of a plan. Truth be told, Penny didn't much care for pie either, but if Peter was going to be afraid, then she had to be the brave one. All right, I've got it, she said. All we have to do is go to the edge of the garden and follow the wall. Sooner or later, it has to come to the gate. This made sense to Peter and cheered him up considerably. The two wet and scraggly little rabbits snuck low through a patch of green onions and some thick cabbage leaves and eventually made their way to the wall that circled the McGregor's farm. See, said Penny. Now we just follow this straight until we hit the gate. But which way do we start? asked Peter. The two little rabbits stretched and looked left and then they stretched and looked right. Both ways looked exactly the same. In the end, they decided to trust their luck. All rabbits have lucky right feet, so they went right along the grassy wall. Eventually, they came upon a great gray and black cat lounging in the sun by the wall. She was licking one of her paws, and the two frightened little rabbits could see that she had five razor-sharp claws, one at the end of each toe. Oh, look what we have here she purred. It's supper, and just in time. Please, we're trying to get home, Mrs. Cat, said Penny. Mrs. Cat was my mother's name, the cat said, arching its back and standing tall. They call me Persephone. Mrs. McGregor says I'm good luck on account of my extra claw. To emphasize this point, the cat flexed her gleaming claws again. Well, Persephone, said Penny, we'll just be going now. I rather think you aren't, Persephone purred. After all, I can't let supper get away. We're not supper, we're rabbits, yelled Peter. Penny tried to get him to quiet down, but he was too upset to listen. I am not a chicken, and I am not a pie, he yelled. And I am not your supper, he roared, and with a mighty leap, jumped clear over the cat. Persephone jumped after the little rabbit, but Peter was too high and too fast. Penny, seeing her chance, darted under the cat and caught up to her brother, the cat hot on their heels. They ran past the spicy-smelling green onions, and they ran past the broad cabbage leaves. They ran past the great red radishes, and they ran past the orange crunchy carrots. They ran, and they ran, and just when they thought they couldn't run another step, they saw the gate. Oh no, yelled Penny. Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees in front of the gate. He was sealing the rabbit's entrance hole with big rocks and gravel. Penny felt big tears come to her eyes. The cat hot on their tails, the farmer in front of them. They were trapped. Peter, she yelled. What do we do? But all Peter said was, I am not a pie. And he took Penny's paw in his and gave a mighty leap. The two little rabbits landed on Mr. McGregor's back. And before the old farmer could react, they gave a second, even mightier leap and hopped clear over the gate. Mr. McGregor stood up just in time to collide with Persephone. The farmer and the cat both went down in a yelling, scratching pile. Peter and Penny just kept running, and running and running, and they never stopped running or looked behind them until they came at last to their home at the big fir tree. They were so tired and wet and scared that they flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut their eyes. Their mother was busy cooking, she wondered what they had done to get so wet and so dirty, but she remembered her own time adventuring as a young bunny and decided that Peter and Penny looked like they had already been punished enough. Mother and Flopsy and Mopsy all ate dinner together, but
But Peter and Penny were still too full from the farm to eat with their family. Even worse, they were coming down with colds from getting so wet in the watering can, their mother put them to bed early. Peter and Penny got a bitter-tasting medicine to help them get better. Flopsy and Mopsy got to eat all of the cake they wanted. The end. Thanks for listening. 